Well, joining me right now is one of those men who's made it through that ordeal and actually is back in India now with his family, former Indian Naval Commander Amit Nagpal. Thanks so much for speaking with us at The Hindu. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be joining with you. Well, we've seen so much happen just within the space of a few days in the week, uh, and I'm sure you're still processing a lot of what happened. Uh, but just to start with, uh, how did you hear of your release? Where were you at that time? Uh, how did you speak to your family? What was it really like coming home? Just give us a sense of that moment when you knew you were going to be freed. Yeah. Oh, I came to know when I'm going to be free was only when I walked out of that facility and I saw the ambassador standing in front and I asked him, uh, are we are we out? He said, yes, you are out. Then are we going home? He said, yes, you are going home. And that's the time I realized before that, no clue at all about what's going to happen. The suddenness with which, which, which we went in. With the same suddenness, we had we came out. So it was it was. I mean, that feeling of uh, that elation of coming out and getting out of there was at the peak that time. And uh, so, none on my my wife had been there with me throughout this uh, ordeal, and uh, she had no clue. She had been meeting the ambassador in the embassy, but no clue at all. So it was a very very pleasant surprise. Uh, you know, there are so many. Uh, parts of your ordeal that I, I understand that we will not be speaking about. But uh, what what was your really your first conversation with your family, if if I may ask? Oh yes, uh, this you that's that's a very good question to ask because uh, I got to speak to her for about two minutes. Uh, I was on speaker, and the first thing that she told me, Amit, I'm not going to leave this place without you. That gave me so much of strength because, uh, as everybody knows. Uh, the the prison term is not a it's not a it's not a punishment for that individual that punishment if, uh, individual can understand but if if his family is the one which suffers the maximum and if they are comfortable or they are okay I think anybody can go through this ordeal. Uh, that 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 certainly does mean a lot. Obviously, um, this began in August of twenty twenty two. But could I ask what made you originally move to Qatar? What was your sense of what you were going to do over there? Yeah, so uh, this was this opportunity of training uh, uh, their navy, Qatar Navy. Uh, it's down my line, right? I've been I've been a, um, you know, a career naval officer since nineteen ninety. I've joined NDS nineteen eighty seven. So this is my core competence. So and they gave me a, an opportunity to train uh, another country, which actually India had been training in this region uh, long ago. We were the first ones to be there, but in between there was a gap. So it was great to get connected to a company which was training in that Middle East, and we did immensely well. We made a lot of inroads. Unfortunately, it had to end this way. Right, and then even the company itself has had to close down. Now, yes. you know, to 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 come to. The charges against you what we know were certainly that they were very very serious uh that you went straight you know as, as soon as you were arrested we already had heard that there was were charges of espionage um or get uh, for a third country uh just give us a sense of how you felt on, on when you were arrested and how uh, long it took for you to actually take in the seriousness of the charges against all of you look uh, yes, uh, uh, once uh, I was arrested, uh, I know the things were going to be very serious, but I always believed, uh, and I, I had done nothing wrong, right? So I always believed, if not today, certainly tomorrow I'll be out of this mess. And uh, I had full faith. I thought I, I believed that whatever powers be, uh, they would understand that we had done nothing wrong at all. And in, if in, if not tomorrow, day after tomorrow, or in the near future, I would be out. So I didn't I didn't really care about the charges because I knew I was innocent and I would get out quickly. And that day came. Even so, innocent people do uh, stay behind bars for sometimes for years at a time uh, without being able to speak. Um, did anything in your training so far really prepare you for what you went through there? Yes, so uh, definitely. Uh, uh, you know, my three years in India, uh, I had I I knew that I had the resilience to withstand this, and uh, you know, just I I just was bothered about my family that if they are okay, 
I will hand, I will be handling, able to handle myself, whatever be the duration. And I had faith. I don't know in God or you can say in the government. I had faith that I will get out. Well, that, 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 that is important. Um, how often were you able to speak to your family? And, you know, in what way was the embassy really helping through this? Yeah. So I will talk about the embassy and the embassy of India under two ambassadors. We saw two ambassadors. The, the support provided was excellent. Uh, consular accesses were, you know, in the last uh, five, six months. Uh, the ambassador right now, Mr. Bipul, he was there every month to meet us. And that was a source of a lot of confidence. Most importantly, they had opened the doors for the families that if whenever you want us, want, want to come and speak to us, you want to uh, chat uh, on the phone or give us, send us messages, they were open. So that was amazingly well done. So uh, hats off. Uh, and and I would I would say, yes, the government would have said, please help them. But an individual does what an individual, uh, you know, his attitude is and his attitude, Mr. Fipple's attitude and his team's attitude was so positive. It, it was amazing. So, and as an individual, I need to thank him for his great work he did. So uh, was Mr. Deepak Mittal, who was before him. Uh, certainly. And, and of course, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has now visited Qatar very quickly after you uh, came back to India. Thanks, the Amir over there. Uh, all of this happening in just a few months, you know, the, the, the pronouncement of the death sentence. Yeah. Um, when the, when the death sentence was pronounced, did you at any point then feel that your faith and your uh, hope and your confidence that you would be free, was that dimmed at all? Yes, it, it affected immensely. Two days, uh, so I made a routine for myself and I could not fi follow that routine for a couple of days. Till that time I spoke to my wife next when she told me, actually we didn't come to know about this death sentence in the court. And uh, I I was hearing on, on the news and I couldn't believe what I saw because it was it was just not uh, you know proportional to whatever th they thought we did. So anyway, so um, so that that's 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 the thing. And uh, it yes, that when I spoke to my wife after those couple of days, two three days, and she told me that government is now going to take charge more uh, seriously, and uh, there was going to be a meeting. So this was twenty sixth and. Um, 30th uh, of October, there was going to be a meeting with uh, Dr. Jashankar in Delhi. And I, that gave me a lot of confidence, yes. And and I just knew that this wouldn't last. Right. And certainly the intervention at the highest level seems to have uh, seen that kind of, uh, uh, kind of effect. Do you wish that uh, the government at the highest level had intervened earlier in the case? Um, I can't go into whatever has happened, but I guess so. If it was, it could have happened now. It it happened now. It could have happened any time earlier. Also, I that I agree with. All right, but um, uh, given that all of this now has happened in a matter of uh, you know, a few months, there was the commuting of your sentence, which was the first sign, I think. Um, and then we saw you know India and Qatar sign a uh, a big a gas deal, which seemed to be an indicator that things were. Uh, back on track and then your release came uh, so who would you really credit with uh, with your freedom today yeah so I'll talk about freedom uh, uh, surely but uh, first I want to thank uh, my immediate family my wife my son uh, Munga's my wife and my son Tarush and my mother uh, who was alone uh, in Noida for most of the time so I just want to thank them for providing the strength to last through this and of course, um, uh, the government, uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, um, and this could have happened only at the highest level. There's no doubt about it in my mind. And that means the order would have only come from Amir. And Amir would have only given the order if the Prime Minister had spoken to him. I'm, I'm sure that is uh, connected. So I would like to thank uh, both Amir, the government of Qatar, as well as our own Prime Minister. And definitely he has, he's, he's the one who's managed to get us out. All right. I don't know how much of the outside world you were able to follow while you were uh, uh, in prison, uh, but there have been those who suggested that somehow the timing of your arrest, the timing of the trial against you, the kind of charges 
uh, of espionage against you. Some reports suggesting it was espionage for a third country like Israel. Uh, these were all connected to geopolitical events. Uh, the, uh, the, the Israel-Hamas war that was going on. Uh, some had suggested that uh, countries in to India, like Pakistan, had a hand in it. Uh, how did you react to some of these reports and were they a cause for greater worry about your own case? What uh, made us uh, go through this and get arrested? Uh, I don't think, I have no clue why it happened. And I hope in the future sometime I do come to know why did we actually go through this? Were we really to blame? Uh, because we did nothing wrong. Uh, all these media reports about Israel and uh, these are all utter nonsense. Nothing. We have done nothing at all. We are not spoken to anybody at all. We are not enemies with uh, Qatar. And these spying cases only take place uh, between enemies. Why should we even, uh, and we were doing well, we did a lot of stuff for them, we were very happy there, people were very happy with us, and then this happened, it's, it's just unimaginable what happened to us. And what was the reason we got in, I have no clue at all, I wish, and I hope that someday in the future I do come to know whether it, all these events affected our uh, Yes, I'm sure there would be some kind of effect, some positives and negatives, because sitting inside uh, everything which also we were watching BBC and CNN and uh, we had we on uh, Indian channel and whatever happened because you, you were only imagining that maybe this will affect, maybe that will not affect. I had no clue what was happening, but that's what I, my feeling was. Right. And, and 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 finally, you were part of a very large Indian community in Qatar, I think 800,000, far more than even Qatari nationals over there. Yeah. Um, yes. Your case and the possibility that India-Qatar ties would suffer because of your case was possibly would have had a shadow over the entire Indian community. Are there any lessons learned, any, any takeaways, anything that you would like to share as advice for the Indian community there? That's a fantastic question because I think people would be having in their minds uh, now onwards that should we really go to Qatar after what is what our uh, compatriots have gone through. So I think uh, if you get an opportunity, you should. I won't stop anybody from going there. It's a nice country and there are good opportunities there to grow. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think I would uh, say that uh, I pray to God that uh, this kind of thing doesn't happen, whatever be the reasons. And uh, that's what I'd like to give an advice to. But this, yeah, you should, one should try in that country out. It's not a bad place to be in. And certainly in the similar sense for the government or a government that is, is, is watching this particular case, because of course, Indian nationals have been caught in other countries uh, as well. It seemed to be, you know, three sort of uh, three pronged uh, strategy in terms of pursuing the case legally um, as well as uh, uh, actually moving at the highest level uh, to intervene while keeping some of the negativity, some of the anti, the, the rhetoric inside the country also at a minimum. Uh, do you think those were credit, those, those are, are lessons that you would take as well? Look, I've never thought about oh, these deeper issues, uh, now this rhetoric which is going on. But yes, um, uh, I'm sure in larger uh, and and uh, more strategic places, this these would would probably have an effect. Uh, but they would have an effect on individuals, whether it ha had affected the relationships between countries for these matters. I doubt that, mm -hmm. because that is much bigger than what in goes on internally in a country. But definitely on individuals on, on their decision making, there would be some. Uh, chunk, but I think in the larger interest of uh, well-being of the countries, I think may not. Sure. Um, and what next, uh, Commander <laughs> Nagpal? Where, what do you hope to do next? Are you back in India? Are you going to stay here? Right now, I need to, uh, the first thing is that I really need to uh, pamper my wife. Um, and and uh, because the ordeal she went through, I mean, I can't even say in words. I need to take care of her and maybe give her a good holiday. And then let's see how things go on. I've not really thought about too much. Uh, let's see how things pan out. And Do you think the last 18 months will have a lasting impact on you? 
yes uh, uh, look physically and mentally i think i've already recovered I, that's what my uh, opinion is but uh, i will not like to forget what i went through and probably i'll put it on record also in, in, in times to come so i would not like to forget but uh, the scars uh, uh, would definitely get erased sooner than later all right but well, we certainly hope uh, for you to have some time with your family now but thank you so much for speaking with us at the hindu kumar thank you so much it was a pleasure and welcome home thank you thank you so much